been having a lot of conversations lately about how the current state of the economy has been affecting coalitions across the country. And I've had a really great opportunity to have a lot of conversations with coalitions around how that's playing out differently for them, either in how they're working with their local programs to manage the changes in the economy or how they're managing their own infrastructure around these changes in the economy. And we did our last resource sharing project newsletter on the topic of all these different impacts and effects on the state level and the local level across the country. And you and I, Suzanne, have had a great opportunity to have some conversations about how that's been playing out in a lot of different ways. And we've been trying to capture some of these conversations online through video so that folks can really hear some of the different pieces that we've come up with and we've talked about and have a different way to really access that information while using some really great free cheap technology right. um, to get information in a lot of ways that our coalitions are trying to help local programs get information as well. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if you want to add anything about how these video snapshots fit in for you and technology, but I know this has been a great opportunity to really hear from other states and then capture one specific state's experience here online for other folks to see. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, th these conversations have been like a good informal way of, of trying to uh, connect and share some ideas. I mean, clearly the resource sharing project was working on a much broader piece with the newsletter mm -hmm. on talking about sort of the span of experiences. And, you know, you and I were talking about, you know, one particular tool that ended up, um, that, right. that's going to come out that way. But, you know, I think that for California and all of us, you know, obviously there's been a lot of public talk about what we're going through. But what we're, what we're experiencing isn't really in many ways very different than a lot of other places. And so, you know, what was helpful for me was to hear some of the things that you've been hearing about what mm -hmm. different states are going through. Well, and it's really interesting because the coalitions in the states are really all across the map. You know, we have a, hand, a very small handful of folks who've actually seen recent increases in funding, mm -hmm. and a lot of that isn't coming from their state specifically, but maybe some new federal opportunities or private opportunities that have sort of just simultaneously been an opportunity to increase the coalition's income and projects. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of one end of the continuum, and it's rare, but it's happened. Mm -hmm. Another end of the continuum um, are, are the states who are grappling with tremendous statewide funding losses and private funding losses that are impacting the coalitions and their local programs. And so trying to help manage some of those um, serious decreases is something that a lot of people have been grappling with too. But along that span, we've also seen um, states that have surpluses. And I can actually think of one specific state that um, is highlighted actually in this reshape about how they've been trying to work with their state legislature to allocate some of that funding that was unexpected and um, a nice opportunity for them. But we're also watching states sort of manage maybe what they've always had is a bare minimum of funding that have not been as heavily impacted by the economic freefall, so to speak, because they were already operating on these threadbare budgets that in a lot of ways they had gone down to the bare minimum of what they could get to operate. They've been able to sort of maintain that. And then their stories now are about how they're protecting that. You know, there's not a lot of opportunity for growth, but then how they're continuing to hold together that bare bones budget. And so you really see people on all different sides of this economic situation from trying to manage these great increases in opportunity to those who are trying to hold on to the very, very little that they had in the first place. Right. So there's no one archetype of how coalitions have been managing it, but everybody's thinking through economics right now in a very different way because the climate's very different. So it's a really interesting opportunity to assess and see where people can go. Well, and, and it's interesting as we, in, in this piece that, in, in the piece that, that you and I worked on, um, mm -hmm. we were talking really much a lot about sort of like how do you prepare for a downturn? You know, how do you right. prepare for losing money? And, um, and and talked about sort of building a disaster kit. And, and and sadly in California, we've had a lot of experience with this idea of a disaster kit because for us, the economic crisis in the large sense has actually not been so different than the drama that looks like our budget every year. Um, that, you know, California has... A, a pretty historical trend of um, of having budgets that are not on time, contracts that don't go out, and so the rate crisis centers here in California and the coalition and, and you know other sort of social service network folks are used to having these terrible gaps between when their contracts ended the year before and when they can bill on the next one. And so some of the like the elements of a disaster kit, like having something like a line of credit, having um, uh, having sort of, you know, plans about how you can, you know, spend a bare minimum while you're waiting for contracting to happen. Like, those sorts of things are sadly really typical of what we've had to do here in California over the years. Mm -hmm. I would never say that it's a good idea to have to do that year to year. I think it's draining and morale busting, and I think it 
it, it erodes the capacity of organizations to last over time. You know, you can't constantly throw organizations into crisis um, and expect them to be healthy and, and, and expect them to function well. I think the programs here do an amazing job of managing through a trauma like that um, mm -hmm. when, in, in all truth, uh, it, is, it is enormously draining. But what I think is interesting now, and, and especially like even in the weeks that we've been sort of talking about this back and forth, is that it's, there's now a weird balance of trying to manage the downturn in the states, but then manage the stimulus from the Fed. Um, and manage the, the, the bounty of, of, I think, a wonderful stimulus package on part of the administration of including violence against women issues um, and having, I, I think, two complex things come out of that. One being that um, you've got money coming down that is going to be, a, for a lot of organizations, a big burst of money that has to go pretty quickly. And so trying to figure out how to do capacity in a way that, um, that actually does a good job spending the money, that you're not buying junk, that you're not, you know, that you're actually hiring people, which is hard to do on a short-term basis. But then secondarily, um, the thing that happened here in California, and, and I, I suspect maybe some other states, is that we've got tons of stimulus money coming to the state. It's now been caught up in our budget process. And so the authorization to spend hasn't happened. So our programs know that this money is out here, but it actually can't go out the door. Um, and so it, it speaks to, I think, an infrastructure problem that, you know, even with, this, with the Fed trying to, to shove money down to the states in a, in a really rapid manner, they're not going to be able to do that. So then the, the compressed amount of time to spend that money is going to get even more compressed. Um, and it, it speaks to almost like, you know, if I had one more thing to add to this disaster kit that I didn't, it speaks to the capacity planning with, with your local organizations. That right now, while we're waiting for the money, we've got to get a thousand times better about what we're going to do to spend it. Like, you know, like essentially, uh, you know, like uh, the president referred to shovel ready projects. We have to have that ready to go um, so that when that money hits the door that we're not going, okay, poof, you know, we've got it. Now what do we do? We're going to actually have to hit the ground running. And, um, and I think that for the coalitions, we're going to really have to think about how to sort of inform those conversations because it is going to be... You know, you know, landing the airplane on the aircraft carrier kind of thing. It's it's going to have to be fast. It's going to have to be accurate. Um, and I and I'm I'm concerned that the more time for our state that we wait, in terms of our budget drama and all those kinds of things, um, the more likely it is that we're we're going to be really challenged. Well, I think you're absolutely right. I think shovel ready is really like a great way to think about this because money having the money is only one piece of the puzzle, right? The mm -hmm. other piece is doing planning and having the thinking process behind. You know, what do we need on a bare minimum? What do we need next when we have opportunity? And what's the most pragmatic for us and for our members?